Welcome everybody. This we're just going to do a quick video today, just filling, uh, well, filling ten minutes. I picked up from a local. I'm going to say Aldi. I picked up recently from Aldi a pack of brushes, and as you saw on the thumbnail, let's just ask: Can you get away with using cheap brushes like this from um, Aldi? Now these are the Deco style brushes. There's a pack of three. You get an inch, an inch and a half, and a two inch. Now. I've got Doris the door that's had numerous paints over the last umpteen weeks, months. Um, I've had a bit of blockade spray over some marker pen and I'm ready to actually put an undercoat on this to bring it forward for future videos. So I thought while we've just got 10 minutes, let's just see what a cheap brush, can you get a finish with a cheap brush? That is the question. A cheap brush and I'm revisiting a bit of a paint We'll talk about this on the next video after this, but I'm going to go and give it another go. I'm going to try the Dulux Trade quick drying undercoat because what I want to do, I've got multiple different surface finishes on here. The spray of the blockade from uh, Roger and Smith and also um, we've got glosses. So I want to bring it up to a undercoat finish for future videos of touching on satin woods over the top. So can I get a nice finish using these on Doris the door with, let's call it a quality paint. We'll find out, be back in a minute. So we've got the paint out, it's the quick dry undercoat. I've got the brush out, I've not washed it out. I'm not one for washing brushes out unnecessarily. I have shook it, I have tried to sprag it out, spray it out to see if any loose bristles come out, nothing too bad. I bet if I started pulling away, I can get bristles out because I can just see some sticking out, but it's a cheap brush. A pack of these three, what do they cost me? I think $4.99. So I'd probably say you get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. Right, working out one of my papier mache, papier mache, working from one side of the kettle. Can you see that? Working from one side of the kettle. I'm gonna do my usual, I'm just looking I'm not doing the edges because the edges are on the door colour the other side. I'm going to keep with that. Right, I've dusted off, I've sanded down, dusted off, tack rag's gone over it and I'm just going to go straight into the top mouldings and panel. And first off, because this is a video of really just what's a cheap brush like, the length out on this brush bristle the length out, let me put this down. The length out is that there. That feels quite stumpy and short, but I have to say with this water-based undercoat from Dulux, having a bit of a shorter brush allows you to really work it over the surface. Those in the know know what I mean. You've got a little bit more control. You've not got a floppy brush. And there's nothing worse than a floppy brush. What's that video up there about these paints, these Dulux? The funny smell to that. I think that could be nearly hybrid. It's not that tough. It feels a very thick paint. I've not added any water to it. Let's see how I go with it. I have to say the brush doesn't feel too bad. It feels like one of those brushes that you can really give a bit of pressure when you're brushing out. You know what's nice about it? Can you see that? It's like a texture to the wooden handle. And I like dry, untreated wooden handles. But there's a crisscross, oh, I'm not saying herringbone. Oh, I don't know, probably a bit of a herringbone crisscross texture to that so your fingers don't slip. Let's just get these on. This paint feels quite thick. I'm not that fussed about Dulux paint anymore. I've lost I've lost my way with it a little bit. The heritage is very nice. I do like the heritage eggshell but some of the others these I'm not too I'm not too impressed. 
if that's the right wording. I'm not too impressed for... Oh, I don't want to, God, don't want to sound too negative. Let's just say, I think there's better paints out there. Uh, can you remember what I did this side of the door? You can just see it up there. It was the Technos Futura 90, which was the gloss. And I said how much it had yellowed. Now you probably can't see on here because we've probably got a bit of bounce back from the light behind me, but you know where I'm getting the white undercoat on? It does really show up how yellow that gloss, that water-based gloss has gone. Now that was done at the end of May. So um, what are we, May, June, July, we're into August now. May, June, July, August. It's a good few months on. Now, you can see I'm not having much working time with this paint. We're on a warm day. I can't do much crow's nesting and laying off. I've just got to virtually get it on and leave it. Still working quickly with it. I have to say the performance of the brush we're doing all right with it. With this being a thicker paint, that shorter length out is allowing me to really work at that paint and manipulate it where I want it to be. Now, you've probably seen when I've done the videos on the AquaGuard, the John O's AquaGuard. That's not an easy paint to apply. I'd say this is probably a bit easier to apply. And even now, I'm not even thinking that this is going to run on me. Whereas if I'd got John O's AquaGuard, I'd be thinking, I bet there's going to be a creep, there's going to be a sag, there's going to be a, a curtain run. But I will see. Right, I'm just going to go off camera, go down to the bottom. I'll come up to the top and carry on talking to you. Right, what I've done, I did those panels, I went down to the bottom, did the bottom panels and I fiddle around up there, up there, down there. And to save time, I've actually brought that bottom section in down here and I'm starting to come up. So a bit backwards way on, but just for the purpose of this video, doesn't matter. Right, I've had a few bristles come out. It's a bit to be expected, but I have to say with it being a shorter brush, it is moving the paint very nicely and getting it where I want it to be. Now, I'm not saying I'd want to use this brush for the finish, but for undercoats, I don't think you'd have any problem using this brush for water-based undercoats. I'd also say if you were using oil-based paint, this might be a good brush to have that you can say I've used it and then thrown it away. Because with it having that shorter length, I've got a little bit more control of spreading that paint around. You'd have to work it a bit more if you've got a longer bristle. And we've got to sniff the bristle. So this was, again, we did it a bit the wrong way around, just touching that top in. Just bringing up these styles now. If you want to watch how to do a door properly, that's in that corner there. And while I've got you, you might have seen a paid promotion in the top corner. This video is not sponsored by anybody, nobody's paying me. It's just the fact that I have to now put paid promotion because I do have an Amazon online shop where I obviously link and show products that I use or things that might be interested in. I might get a small commission if they actually sell by anybody, but I'm not carrying any stock. I don't send it out, it's just off Amazon. So that's why you might see a paid promotion. And you know, if I can get a commission towards that Porsche that I'm after, you know what I mean? The odd couple of pence here all adds up. Aldi's not sponsoring me. Dulux aren't sponsoring me. No money's changed hands. And these brushes cost me 
four ninety nine. I'm going to say not bad. I'm going to wash that out in a moment. Not bad at all. I'm going to let that dry. Uh, actually, I can see we're on a warm day. That there, I can touch it, it's drying already. Not a bad undercoat. And to be fair, Dulux don't do a bad undercoat for coverage there. Look, I'd got some dark areas. They weren't too bad. It's going over where my marker pen was. I would say not bad at all. My conclusion, because this is only part one of a video, the video after this will be talking about putting some satin mud on it. But this video is talking about these cheapo brushes. Are they any good? I'll, I'll say every brush has its use. I'm not saying this brush is a brush I would use for finish work and fancy cutting in. You can just see some bristles coming out there a lot. I can pull them out. It's not even the tips of the bristles there. They're a synthetic bristle, nice handle. It looks like a brass, copper, ferrule. Let me just see what it says. Oh, do you know what? I love that word ergonomic. Ergonomic, ergonomic. Ergonomic grip. Brush handle made from sustainably grown beech wood. Nice. You could put that on your barbecue, couldn't you, when you want to smoke stuff? Beech wood, special high quality mixed bristles. So it's not actually saying what the bristles are. Uh, are um but they are what they are aren't they cheap and on that note i'm going to say watch the next video following on from this be down there because we're going to put some satin wood on but going forward cheap brush five quid a pack it's worth it to have in your toolbox to throw away or even wash out like i'm going to do now this will wash out not too bad hopefully and that has coated that door nicely so it's all right, it's, it's a brush that's all right. Not for a professional, unless you're doing something like this where you want to just undercoat and move on. But well, thanks for listening. Have you used these? What do you think? <laughs>